Hello, my name is John Sparkman and my desk is getting a bit crowded today. Uh, this is the third in three parts unboxing my Fuji X-T3 kit I just bought. If you want to see the X-T3 with the 1855 kit lens unboxing, previous video, I also did the 23mm f2, so if you like any of those and you want to see what's inside the boxes and some first thoughts, check them out. Uh, but today this just arrived in the post. so. It's gonna be a first for both of us, uh, and I admit I do not have the batteries for this yet, so I'm just gonna be trying to attach it to there first. And you know, Fuji batteries are like 55 pounds each. I need to get that sorted, really. I mean, whew. okay, right, uh, and this needs two. So when I picked up this kit, I thought that it would be like the traditional Canon kind of dual grip business at the bottom, where it would fit two batteries there, and it'd have like a little upwards bit that would fit inside the camera, uh, and it would just run off the two and have a little portrait grip on the side. This is slightly different. This doesn't have the bit that goes into the camera, so you can actually use three batteries, one inside the camera and two in this grip. Then it also gives you the ability to have the portrait mode kind of button so you can go sideways. Have a little look inside. And we have, okay, we've got a lot of stuff. This is a first for me as well, so don't need that. That is the app. Essentially, I need that. Paperwork, paperwork. A mains adapter, which is promising. I've heard good things about this for a reason. So, we have, what is this? We have the adapter for it, so they just connect to each other. So this is a, a step up transformer kind of doobly that you see. Um, American one I'm not interested with and the main thing if I can even get it out oh there we go okay pop them out of the way nice little grip so it's got like a flocking on the top, which is nice, I guess, to stop the damage to the bottom there. Uh, it's got this kind of upright section here, which I imagine is to increase your grip on here. So it's a bit chunky, a bit easier to hold. Um, this, okay, so this just pops off and you've got some pins there, which are bouncy metal ones. I'm sure someone just grimaced online of me doing that, but uh, it's my kit, I'll do what I want. And that is the connection that was quite straightforward so I guess all I do is pop it on it's fine and lock it in place that's kind of how battery extension grips always attach with the locking of the um, tripod thread we've got another one just at the bottom we're all standard we've got another camera lug camera strap lug here and um, it feels very weighty now, it feels like a big old, <laughs> real big old camera and I can see that this grip extension is really helpful now um, for holding it. Without that I think it would be small, then it would go suddenly really big and it would be a bit, bit of a strange one. This feels like you now have two handles, two areas to pick up the, the device and in fact when you're holding it in this mode here, this is a very chunky grip, it's very similar to a Canon's kind of huge battery grip and this is this is what I'm used to I've got pretty big hands I'm pretty tall guy so I need a big grip for big hands um, we've got all of the buttons we've got a quick button a function button we've got the locking button so this probably won't work if I put that on um, AEL AFL directional so one of the really cool things I learned about this battery grip when I was chatting with the rep was that if you plug the DC power in to the side here, we've just got a little trap door. There we go. You can actually charge the batteries or run the Fuji off of mains when filming, which is good. If you're doing some indoor uh, movie magic and you need to do like an interview or, or a longer piece, just plug it in, you don't need to change the batteries at all. That is a game changer. I think that should be included in every battery grip. Uh, we do also have inside the Fuji itself a USB-C port. Uh, now this might be good for battery packs, that kind of stuff, they accept USB-C or plugging it into a computer. 
We can charge all three batteries in one go, I imagine. Uh, first impressions on doing all this will come in a future video. At the moment, just speculation from someone who's used to some very old kits. I'm just going to pop on the flash, wherever it may be. Where are you? Here we go. On to the top. And that's real nice there, just like that. It's quite squarish. It's, it's got this kind of like square design to it right now. Um, but it's a heck of a lot lighter than the DSLRs that I'm used to shooting with. Uh, this lens is a fraction of the weight. This battery grip is a fraction of the weight. In fact, I'll see if I can find my Canon 60 um, dual battery grip. So we can see that the grip that I used to have is it's huge, you know, it's barely fit my fingers around it. Uh, I'm just going to compare them like to like. Off we pop. So we've got the Canon one here on the top and the Fuji on the bottom. They look roughly the same. You know, they have the same kind of features. The battery comes out the bottom. We've got the function buttons on the top, scroll wheels, exposure, that kind of business. But this is, uh, yes, it's a big old, big old chunky little thing in comparison. Put it right around. So there we go. So they are smaller. Obviously mirrorlesses are much smaller than the big old DSLR ones. Granted, the DSLR, if you had two batteries in this, uh, you would happily shoot two and a half thousand photos before it ran out. I imagine the mirrorless is not going to give me the same kind of range. But what we lose in battery, we make up in technology. Uh, by getting rid of that mirror, we can bring the lenses inwards, which means we can have smaller lenses, higher quality lenses, cheaper lenses, better focusing features, backlight sensors, all that kind of goodness. But DSLRs will always have a place in my heart. In fact, shortly after this is going to be filmed, this Canon 60 is going into retirement as a video camera. No longer do I have to guess that the camera is facing me correctly. No longer do I have to use an iPad to adjust it and then flick it to video mode and then just hope it's still recording. It's just gonna be really nice to uh, have, a, have a camera which I can use quite easily. Uh, I'm gonna be picking myself up a field monitor as well to increase my visibility so I can actually see if I'm focused or not and I should be about right by now. And no longer do I have to be in manual mode on a 6D on the focus to actually be somewhere in the right depth of field. So I hope you really enjoyed that last part of my X-T3 unboxing. Uh, if you like unboxing tech reviews, comparisons, any kind of photography related things, even a bit of video in there somewhere, hit the subscribe and the bell button, stick around and I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.